Hi, this is James Scott with Board in the Bay. In this episode, I'm reviewing the game Dinogenics by Richard Keen, ages 14 and up, one to five players, plays about 90 minutes, published by Ninth Haven Games. In this game, I guess we're going to go ahead and talk about the proverbial T-Rex in the room. How does this compare to Dinosaur Island? Let me start off by saying I enjoy Dinosaur Island. I played it a few times. I had fun. A few things I didn't care about it. Some of the, the colors, meh, that, that's art style. It doesn't bother me too bad. The blaze style, there's a few fidgety things I didn't care for, but that's for a different review. How does it compare to this? I'll let me start out by saying uh, this game is head over heels so much more enjoyable than Dinosaur Island was. All across the board, I think. Uh, I really enjoy how easy it is to teach how easy it is to play and the overall art and style of the game the qualities of the material of this game are, are excellent the boards that you be playing on you're going to be playing on the main board this main board and on the main board is just like a regular worker action uh placement game where you place a worker take an action place a worker take an action after all the players have placed all the workers then you go to the upkeep phase. After the upkeep phase, go to the next phase. Everybody's going to, each player is going to have their own little player board. If you can th see, it's really thick, double layered cardboard, and the top layer is notched. So you'll be keeping track of your dinosaur value. At the end of every season, this is how many victory points you're going to get. So obviously, this one, you want to get this track up real high quick. Over here, you're going to be building these little, you're going to take these little wooden fences and you're going to be build, building these uh, little pins to hold your dinosaurs. Over in this area of these notches, this is where you're going to be buying buildings and putting in buildings. You're going to want more hotels because you only start off with a base hotel that can only hold two visitors in a little spot up here for your workers. You're going to start with three or four workers depending on the uh, amount of players. And the third season, you'll get an additional player. Missed that the first time. And over here is a little cheat sheet, kind of give you an idea of the different dinosaurs' requirements. How do you get your dinosaurs? Really great idea. It's a set collection game. You're going to be using these DNA cards. Really good quality. They are going. To, you're going to have an auction area where you're going to have. They'll have the cost to buy them, also to how much that you get for selling them. Up here at the top will tell you how many of these cards you need to make that dinosaur. So you want to make a, st a stentosaurus, you need three stentosaurus cards. Take these, put your meeple on the lab, and you create a stentosaurus. Take one out of the box. I almost grabbed the wrong one. Definitely grabbed the wrong one. There's so many different ones. Grab the little stentosaurus and put it on your board. Down at the bottom has their, their requirements. He needs a space of a pin size of two squares. He is a herbivore. Don't take any meat. He's going to give you two reputation and three value points. I'll show you that. I'll explain those in a minute. Now, for some reason, you got the bad luck, which I have all the time on the set collecting games. I only have two st uh, stegosauruses, but I got a T-Rex DNA. Well, I'm going to put them together, and I'm going to get a mutant. He's got these little mutant dinosaurs. They don't give you reputation points, but they do give you value. So you get at least something out of having them. Unique thing about the mutant dinosaurs is you can feed them and create more uh, mutant dinosaurs. The regular dinosaurs don't don't expand like that. They they just you have to keep putting out uh, cards. Also, too, you'll have a tracker, which will be tracking your park's reputation or your island. And you have a cube here, and we'll be going along. And in this spot, we'll show you put your little token to show who goes first, second, third, depending on where you are on the track. And then as this thing slides across for each season, 
This will tell you player one gets three visitors, player two gets two, player three gets two, and then there's going to be three bonus ones where the first person gets dibs on two of them, and then the rest of the players start taking one at a time till they're all gone. If you can, but in order to take them, you have to have room in your hotels. So you're going to be want to be upgrading your hotels. For every visitor you get, you get a dollar. For every two visitor that leaves your park alive at the end of that season, you get three victory points. So you want to keep them alive. Another reason why you want to keep them alive for obvious reasons, but if they get killed, they you'll get a scandal token for every one killed. Scandal tokens at the end of the game, you lose six victory points for every one. There are ways of getting rid of them. The scandals got these are got these nice little scandal little tokens, make it look almost like a National Enquirer Sun type. The how how do you guys get killed? Well, your dinosaurs could possibly rampage. Your dinosaurs have requirements. They have to be in a certain size cage. Also, they also have to be fed if it's a carnivore. Carnivores are fed meat or goats in this, in this game. There's a spot on the board where you can get three goats by placing a worker there. There's only a couple spots. So towards the end of the game, as everybody starts getting these meat eaters, because they have a higher reputation. So for a higher, the higher reputation, you're going further up this track. So you can go first, but you're taking more risk. As you probably were thinking, well, the person in first is going to get more people visit. It's going to keep them in front. Not necessarily. Remember, that's going to bring you up on victory points. That's not going to affect your, your reputation. Your reputation is based off of your dinosaurs you have. The bigger, meaner, flashier dinosaurs give you more reputation. The more you have, the higher your reputation is going to be, but that means that's more you're going to have to feed, bigger pens you're going to have, a lot more you got to maintain. So you may, you may push your luck to keep that high reputation, but if the dinosaurs start going berserk and rampaging, you're going to start losing people and you're going to lose scandal. And in the long run, it's actually going to hurt you more than it helps you having a high reputation. So you got to kind of balance this out with the what you can really comfortably have. Some people will go ahead and take that risk. When your dinosaur is in the wrong size pen, or if you can't feed them, now you have to try to feed them if possible. So you have to use all your goats as possible. If not, you roll uh, the six-sided dice. It's called a custom dice. Really nice deep uh, cut dice it is there's two of them you roll one for most dinosaurs two for the t-rex the raptor what's nasty about the raptor is pretty much everything on here is bad for the raptor if you get the smiley face which is only one of them your visitors think the whole thing is like a publicity stunt and yay good show give you a dollar if you get the little scratches that means your dinosaur just destroyed a facility. First, they'll try to break a fence. After, after they break a fence, they're, if they're loose out in the park, then, they'll just, then they, uh, they would destroy a facility. And then that can cascade. And then there's our ways of, of fixing it. If you get the uh, fossil, you will destroy a facility and kill a visitor. Raptors also kill a visitor on these scratches, so they're really nasty, as you've probably seen in the movies. Great dice. Uh, it's really simple. The odds are you're not going to be rolling them very often in most games. We have found the higher the player count, the more risk you're going to taking. You might start risking it, especially later in the game when there's only a couple spaces for their goats. And T-Rexes, each T-Rex takes two goats. So you have two T-Rexes, a raptor, and a pterodactyl. That's six goats you're going to have to have every turn. So you have to take two of those three spots available. And if you're only playing three-player, there's only two spaces available. 
So other players are going to be take, it might be taking those ghosts just to block you. This game isn't very, in the general, there's two versions of this game in, in some ways. There's the regular where everybody kind of plays their own, their own, but there's also a handful of cards where they call the black hats, <laughs> Yay. where you put those hats in the deck and they're corporate espionage cards. And there's various ones, and those will actually start affecting other players. So if you like attacking other players and messing with other players, definitely put those in. And it's stuff like, your hotel's infested. This, uh, you lose all, all your visitors, run out the hotel, and it, it, it's a lot of fun stuff. There's also a card where you can put in the breaking news, which is a corrupt, uh, corrupt T-Rex. And that, if you're playing, like to play with people that have a lot of T-Rexes, great card to put in there. You're going to hate if that, that card ever makes it out. Breaking news, what those are, that's a card at the bottom. At the beginning of every turn, you flip one over into the upcoming news. So in that I'll, part, I, I, another thing I do like the way he did it, is you actually know what is going to happen next turn. So you can kind of plan a little ahead. It's not completely blindsided. You, you're hearing the news. Oh, look, there are going to be protesters on our island and they're going to block site A. So we're not going to be able to use that. So let's hurry up and use site A this turn. And then next, and then it'll slide over at the beginning of the turn. So you'll know what that is and then you replace that. Really neat concept. I like that. It's fun knowing what's coming up and you can plan ahead a little bit. They pretty well mess with the island bad enough where it is good to know where they're, they're coming up. The auction area, like I said, you buy and sell your dinosaurs, doesn't refresh. At first seems kind of another one of those ones that seems weird. But once you start selling, it encourages players to sell. Because you, there's multiple ways to grabbing DNA out of the deck. I know it may sound a lot confusing. It's actually very, very intuitive. Uh, if you played any type of worker placement game, you'll pick it up like that. It is really easy to learn, really easy to teach. The other cards they have in the game. Is the manipulation cards. Which are these cards. On the manipulation cards, they are very uh, various things. A lot there's a lot of good stuff in here. These also these are where you put your black hats to mess with our players. But it's stuff in here like get five free fences, get four meat. But uh, as valuable and powerful as these cards are, you have to watch it because there is only a couple spaces to play these cards. So you you're gonna balance on how mu uh, how many of those you're gonna dig for, because even though they, they may be some good stuff in there, you're not really increasing your your reputation or your value. Overall quality material again excellent. These dinosaurs, these little wooden dinosaurs are excellent quality, really good detail. Uh, I have heard a few people say that they found that. They are uh, like the little tail or the little head broke off on a couple of them. They just had a little spot glue it back. So just, just be aware that they are wood. So they are a little on the fragile side, especially on these uh, mutants. And then the other things are the money. The money are some simple little cardboard. They work simple. The... Here would go my one complaint, and it's a minor one. The rule book left a little bit to be desired. It is a good rule book, real, real colorful, glossy, got some nice pictures, a few samples. What's the good news is the, as I understanding as of the recording of this video, they are planning on doing another Kickstarter and in the Kickstarter, they're gonna be printing up some more of a new version of this rule book. Until then, if you want, you can also go get the PDF version, which I'll put a link down below. You can get a PDF of the new rule book. It is definitely an improvement on the one that came with the first edition of the game. 
yeah, a lot more samples, a lot more stuff that had been clarified. You had to kind of dig on for a few rules in here we had a question on. But after reading the new one, there's a lot of aha. <laughs> that, um, so that that is about it. So this is James Scott with Board on the Bayou. Always remember to like, subscribe, and comment below. Oh, you clever little girl.